And my opponent is going d4, meaning that we're gonna be getting a queen's gambit decline uh, again. I'm gonna be playing knight f6, and he doesn't really go for the main lines. And theoretically speaking, c5 is the best move, but uh, I'm wondering what could happen if we play like the uh, London system reversed colors ways. Let's see. He plays bishop d3. Can I keep my bishop to g6? Let's see. Gonna go e6. You know, I'm just a London guy. I don't really know many things. I know the London. I play the London. Seems like, mm, seems like a pretty fair trade for me. He does play knight e5, and I'm not really that happy about uh, taking on e5. Not about allowing f4 though. I'm just gonna make this move. In case he plays f4. I think I can take on e5, go knight e4. That's one of the things. Could also completely ignore it. Could also play like c6. I think we're ignoring it. I'm gonna go for queen c7 and maybe castle long next. I have to keep an eye though on the f7 pawn. Wait, is he blundering? I think he might be blundering something here. Because this guy is now very loose because the queen is no longer defending it. So I can take on e5 once and take on d3, which looks winning, perhaps. Because he cannot take here because I take. And now I take this and rook is hanging. He has to move the rook, but I'll play bishop e7 and I'm winning. In a way that I'm going to be up upon. Okay, just take his rook. He takes this, I play rook g8 and I'm up in exchange. Okay, that was pretty pretty easy. Did not expect him to play like, um, you yeah, had to make like this kind of mistake, but okay. Uh, what's the usual way to deal with this knight e5 and f4? That is a bit pretty um, sensible subject because there's no like universal kind of answer. It really depends on the specific position really. And um, in this particular one, he did not get a good version at all. Like I could have developed pretty comfortably anyways. But sometimes it's annoying because you can't really move your pieces and it really gets into your head. But um, trying to look for some kind of uh, either playing knight e4 yourself or trading his knight and then trying to do some kind of play in other way as vague as it may sound so so yeah I hope this <laughs> I hope this helps <laughs> okay so the pawn on g3 is very weak I can take immediately if I want to that actually looks amazing just gonna go for it <laughs> King h1, queen h4, queen h3, mate. GG. So, hey, we've just got another land win, but with colors reversed. King is caught. Only move queen h3. He does resign. We pick up the win. Uh, okay, he plays b3, and we're going to be trying to play the London system with colors reversed. Once again, I'm just going to do the same thing. Gonna try to like get decent development and gonna be developing my pieces like typically for the land. Ooh, he plays f3, but he's threatening f e4. But man, this guy never heard Ben Feingold saying never play f3. How do we deal with this though? I think we shouldn't care. Just ignore that. Queen e2. I'm just gonna go bishop e7. Do not go bishop d6 because then they have e5. I'm thinking though, I go bishop e7, he goes e5, I'll have to play knight g8 perhaps. Which is not a disaster, but does not look ideal. So how about I start this way, and if he goes e5, I go knight g8. And I'm just gonna play like maybe queen a5 now. Could also go like a5, a4. Uh, queen a5, man. This should be bad for my opponent, but why? I'm just gonna do this, force him before. I'm gonna drop the queen and then I'm gonna hook him with a5. I think that's the play. It does go a4. And I can definitely go b5. You can also play like bishop b4 into c3. I think we go b5 though. No time to waste. He takes, gonna take back, rook c8 kind of ideas. His pawns are very slow, I'm attacking with pieces here. Uh, 
Okay, what's the best play? I guessing, guessing bishop a3 is like always okay. Trading his bishop, weakening his king. Rook c8 should be good. And how do we continue now? Okay, I think this way. Queen is coming into c3. Then we just use the good old rook lift to mate. I don't see a defense. And his piece, his pawn play was just way too slow. Knight c4. Ah, tricky. Okay, I have to take, he can force like the queen trade. Here he has knight b2 saving, so we cannot allow it. But okay, we just get checkmate now. Uh, okay, he plays e3 on the first move. Uh, gonna go d5 and you know what? Against the sidelines when they don't, don't go like d4 and they play all this crap, we're gonna play London system anyways. Just with like colors reversed. And I'm gonna be playing with bishop g6 this way because we're down at tempo. And he takes opening up my rook, thank you very much. And I'm gonna go e6, knight f6 next. And the knight on c3 is like already a little bit misplaced in this closed game. The knight should be always in, I mean behind the c pawn, not in front of it. Just gonna go c6 and then uh, knight d7, bishop d6. Okay, he castles, meaning that he's not afraid of any uh, attack potentially on the h file. But he should. He definitely should. Okay, knight e5, do we take? I think we do. Then go knight d7. He can play f4. I was planning queen h4, h3, and then maybe like queen g3. Maybe it's not good, and I'm just gonna have to play bishop c5. And I'm very active, I'm gonna castle long, and I can break with like f6. This is interesting because he's offering a queen trade, but just because we have played it in this fashion, I think it doesn't really make that much sense to trade queens. Although it's definitely playable, I think I will just try to uh, keep them on the board. I don't like this move, but uh, I'll make it. Uh, okay, he's already running away with a king. That is pretty funny. Pretty funny. Uh, still, d4 is not that uh, that great. And if I go g5, maybe that's an interesting move, because f5 drops the e5 pawn. And I'm actually opening queen's path to the c2 pawn. So actually, maybe queen h7... Uh, had some some reason behind that. Maybe I've seen it in advance. Who knows? <laughs> just gonna take the pawn now. If he goes rook c1, I can just keep collecting stuff. He plays rook b1 defending. But I think we get some pretty funny tactics after bishop takes. Bishop is pinned. Only move is to take with a king. But then we do get in d4. So I think my pieces are becoming quite active now after d4. Because king takes... We might sack another one with like knight e5. Okay, I can play like knight b6, which is easier. Could also take this bishop. Uh, but which one is which one is easier? That is the question. Man, I'm so annoyed that I don't see the mate by force. I know it should be, I just don't see it. Okay, I'm just gonna go like uh, knight e5, king e5, f6. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it simple, because I don't see it, which is kind of sad. I'm gonna play like knight f6, king c4, just gonna go knight b6, covering the square. Wasting so much time without even like uh, finding the win, it's annoying. I mean, I'm obviously winning with like anything that I play at this point, but I wanted to really like find that uh, book win, you know? Okay, can take with a queen. Yeah, just play rook d3, take on g2. I mean, that's a mate. Not sure why it took so long. Okay, this is mate. I was actually just wasting time for no reason. But I think that was like a funny maneuver. After we got in g5, the queen is activating. The queen that actually looked really silly on h7, all of a sudden became really active after he did this kind of king uh, journey. And then I think this is pretty cute tactic with d4. Because if he moves the king, I'm winning back the knight. And after this, we are opening up the rook, and I'm at least winning back the bishop and keeping up winning position because we I, I managed to open up like a lot of lines for my pieces. So um, yeah, let's go for the next one. We do get the black pieces once again, and plays g3. 
against this we're gonna be playing the London system as I was saying uh, previously gotta go like knight c6 I'm actually gonna try to play it in like the uh, Jabava London kind of fashion gonna go like queen d7 castle long and then just push it yeah bishop h3 he's gonna castle and we're gonna push him baby yeah push him baby gonna go h5 he plays d4, just gonna ignore that, even though e4 might have been a decent move. We're just focusing on mating the guy. We can, we can take on g2 and then take on g3. And then queen is coming into h3. Okay, queen is coming. Okay, queen is coming, but king is running. Just bishop c5 maybe? Ah, I guess that's a bad move, but I'm gonna play it. I think rook h1 can maybe play it now, but knight is coming in. Okay, my point was that I'm trying to attack e3, but I'm gonna take it and take on g3 now next, maybe. On king e2, obviously. Or on king e1. And we do get the mate on e3, so it turns out bishop c5 was actually helpful. <laughs> Look at my opponent, <laughs> that's a funny selfie. <laughs> Let's go on the next game. He plays g3, and against this type of opening, you know what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna try to play the London, but with, like, reversed colors. See, we're gonna be playing e6. Let's go h6, create a square for this guy. Gonna go like knight f6. Uh, we could also like play the, in this fashion with like bishop d6. Should we take with the queen or with the pawn? I think taking pawn is fine. Because we can maybe take on e4 if he plays it. Then drop the bishop to like h7 if needed. So here a bad blunder would be knight f6 because he takes and then he takes on b7. So don't do that, just play like knight c6 first. Then knight f6 next. Okay. He takes on f6, developing my queen. Thank you for that, opponent. Again, you can also try to, like, learn from the, the mistakes that my opponent is doing. I'm just going to be castling. And you can already see, even though I move the black pieces, I already have a lady in development. And I'd love to play b5 with b4, but my knight would be hanging. So I'll just have to defend it first, and then I'm ready to do this. Could also maybe potentially consider knight b4, because this would be hanging. And I don't see a good way for him to defend both against d3 and a2. So yeah, we're going to be winning that. King is under attack, or under check, I may say. Queen is being given. Both as Gambit has joined the arena. Bishop is hanging. Maybe he takes my pawn on b7. That's go rook d2, though. I'm gonna play queen e1 check. If rook d1 maybe takes on c3, is okay. King c2. Okay, this is maybe still theory. Just gonna play like rook c7 or d5. If knight moves... Oh, he maybe had 92. Oh, okay, it wasn't trapping. Never mind. Okay, 94. Uh, how do we mate this? I'm gonna go rook c4, just trying to like brutally win with rook c8 and takes on c3. Okay, bishop f1. Do we care? Generally not, but. Okay, I'm gonna move my rook back. You won. Okay, gonna bring second rook into the game. I wanna play e5, but there's knight f5. Maybe I just go queen e3. I'm not really threatening queen d4 because there will be this check. Okay, just gonna ask again. Can I take? Can I take, sir? He plays knight b3, saying no. I don't know why am I struggling to win up a queen, to be honest, but... I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm gonna go rook back. The thing is, they don't really teach this kind of stuff in schools, yeah? How to win with, like, queen up. I'm gonna take one c3, just... I'm a caveman and I wanna, like get rid of stuff so I can see the position clearly, you know. <laughs> okay, gonna take on d3. If, if, if he was playing bishop c2, I was actually, actually about to take and I'm a queen and I'm up like a million pawns. Now it's like resignable territory after I take on d3. It was like resignable territory like a while ago, but still. <laughs> gonna play d4, queen c3 idea. Yeah, just gonna go for it and d5. King a2 has to be played defending the knight, but I'm just gonna... Push my pawns. Rook b2, just pushing my pawns. Push him, maybe. Go d3, e3. Knight a1, what a move. <laughs> just gonna go d3, d2. Rook b7. Uh, am I the, running the risk of stalemate? Not really, because he has the knight. And also the pawn. Like a constant idea that I had, but yeah, I mean, I kind of went for it anyways. And here, just to kind of kill the fun for opponent, uh, I'm going to be taking on a1, and I'm going to be showing you the power of the 
two passers because this is advancing and he cannot stop both pawns. This was definitely not forced, but was one of the thousand wins that I had. And I definitely advise you to do this whenever you have this type of position. Just make sure you make things uh, easier for you. And yeah, I mean, he's gonna quit now. Uh, okay, weird. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna be struggling to mate him with a queen. As I was saying, they, they, they don't really teach this kind of stuff in schools, but we do end up getting it though. Okay.